What's up everybody, this is Joshua Casper and welcome to a prototyping tutorial where we're going to make a water level indicator slash alarm. I already did an intro video, you should go, you should go check that out, but essentially we're going to make this thing start to finish. And uh, we use these, or I made this because here in Brazil there's a water tank on top of the house and we don't know when it's about to be full and then we just have to wait till it's overflowing because the pump doesn't have a mechanism to stop automatically so once the water's overflowing we shut the pump off and uh, that wastes a lot of water so I figured why not put a simple circuit up there and we can turn it on and off and see when it's about to overflow so we can stop the pump before the water overflows and save some water. Uh, it's really simple to make and it's and it works pretty well. I demonstrated the final prototype here in the in the intro video. But today I'm going to show you how to set it out or lay it out on the breadboard and then in the next tutorial we're going to go ahead and actually put it on perf board to make it uh, more of a permanent installation and we're going to put it inside uh, the soap container that I have here. It's real cheap. But uh, anyway, the things you're going to need are some 220 or 330 ohm resistors. I'm using a 220 here. And you're going to need as many of those as LEDs that you want or indicators that you want. Uh, right now, I'm only going to show you one indicator, but all you have to do is duplicate the process for more LEDs. And that's because I only have one BC547 transistor left. Uh, I thought I had two, but apparently I only have one left. So... You're going to need the resistor, the LED, and the transistor for as many as you want. So if you want three indicators, you're going to need three of each of those things. And I also have a buzzer, and the buzzer I would put on the final prototype here, I put it connected to right when the water is going to be uh, overflowing. So it's going to be connected to the red LED. So what I'm going to do is just show you how to set up the circuit with just one LED. So I'm going to put it on the bre uh, breadboard here, the transistor, and then I'm going to connect the positive leg of the LED to the transmitter, I think it's called, pin, which is the final pin here over here on the right. And that's with the flat side facing me right now, so you're going to need to make sure that's happening, that's the way it is. And the re uh, resistor, I'm going to put on the first pin and I'm going to connect it to the power source which on the breadboard is going to be this red power line and if I wanted to now I would connect the negative or ground pin of the LED to the ground source which is going to be this blue line on the breadboard and the next thing I would need to do is have a power line going into the bucket of water, which is going to be this green wire. I'm going to put that into the power line over here. And then what I would do is just take that and put it at the bottom of whatever bucket um, I'm going to be using for the uh, to hold water. And then the next thing I need to do is take the yellow wire and connect it to the base of the transistor which is the middle pin. And then this wire I would connect to whatever level I want to be uh, shown when it's, say it's midway, I would connect it to midway down the, the bucket here. And then that light will light up when the water gets to that level. So we can go ahead and try, try this out real quick. So as you can see, the green wire is at the bottom. And the next, I mean, to, to try it out, I'm going to have to plug up the battery here. It's just a 9-volt battery with positive and negative leads. Uh, I'm going to put the negative in the negative. Come on. And the positive in the positive. And the next thing I can do is just put this wire into about here and then fill it up with water and see if that LED lights up. Hopefully you can see the LED here. So here we go, I'm going to fill it up with water, and boom, it's lit up. So that's telling me that the water level is finally reached the point at which I set by this yellow wire. And if it was up higher, it wouldn't light up. You see what I'm saying? Pretty sweet. 
Um, if we wanted to add a buzzer now to it, I've got a nine volt buzzer here. You can use a six volt. I use the six volt in the final product because it, it comes out louder when we're using the nine volt battery. But you can also use a 12 volt. The pitches and the intensity is just a little different. But just like the LED, there's a positive and negative lead here. So I'm gonna take the positive and put that to the emitter, which is gonna be the same uh, leg of the transistor that we put the LED, positive LED. And then I'm just gonna connect that to another row on the breadboard, like that. And then the last thing I need to do is take a ground and just like I did with the ground for the LED, I need to ground the uh, the buzzer. So I'm going to take that and put that here and take this and put that into the ground lane. Okay, and I'm going to connect my battery again. And if I put the, the yellow wire back into the water, now we got sound and light to indicate to us that the water level is wherever we set it to be. Now, you can duplicate that process as many times as you want. For example, um, I'll show you if we, if we pretend that this is another 547 transistor, it's not, I'm not gonna hook it up, but I'm not gonna hook it up or anything, but um, we would do the same thing. We would put another LED to the positive, again, to the emitter, which is that far right pin. And then we would connect that to the ground It's a little bit obnoxious, the length of that wire. It makes it really difficult. If you're in the United States, if you're in Europe, there are jumper wires, they're called, which are, which are specifically for breadboards, which have just one solid piece you can stick in, one solid piece, one solid lead, it's called. So anyway, like I said, put the ground of the LED to the ground line of the breadboard or whatever. There you go. And you would do the same thing with your resistor. You would put it to the power line. Like so. And then you would take your second indicator wire, connect it to whatever you want, maybe midway up the bar, the bar uh, maybe midway up the container. And you would connect that to the base of the transistor, which is the middle pin. There you go. And then that would work the same way as the other one. That, was, that would be all you needed to do. And you can duplicate that as many times as you want as long as you have that uh, 547 transistor. And that's it. That's how you do it. That's how you prototype it on the breadboard. And in the next tutorial, I'm going to go buy another transistor. And we're actually going to go ahead and hook it up on perfboard and solder all the parts together and make it look pretty. Anyway, we'll see you next time. Peace.